Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. You are looking at the Messerschmitt MEP 1102B, German Tier 10 attack aircraft. It's a gem. I've really enjoyed flying this aircraft, and I'm going to share it with you today in this video. Now, the P 1102B is characterized as having powerful auto cannon armaments effective against ground targets which they certainly are very good cannons specifically it has four 30 millimeter cannons each of which do 350 damage per second with a rate of fire of 330 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 700 meters, which is a very good effective firing range. The aircraft has good survivability and is resistant to critical damage and fire. Good airspeed and a good boost. If I remember correctly, it's got a 45 second boost. We'll check on that here shortly. It is ineffective in maneuvering combat. So you're not going to be turning on a dime with this aircraft. Uh, effective in destroying ground targets in low-level flight. Equipped with a powerful defensive turret, specifically uh, two 20mm machine guns, each of which do 240 damage per second, and have an effective firing range of 1,000 meters. Boy, that is excellent. 1,000 meters. Uh, you're probably firing at most aircraft before they even get in range of you. A field of fire, uh, 40 degrees, gun elevation, 50 degrees, gun depression, minus 40 degrees. It all also, of course, carries powerful bombs, specifically four bombs, each of which do 5,000 damage in a damage radius of 75 meters. Looking at the aircraft's stats, First, we'll take a look at uh, forward firing gun armaments, our 30 millimeter cannons. Again, we have four of those. Cumulative damage that all of those cannons can do at one time together, 1,513 damage per second. Again, an optimal distance of 700 meters. The cannons are excellent. I mean, you, I've taken out so many aircraft with those cannons, it's definitely a force to be reckoned with. The defensive armament, cumulative damage, it can do 240 damage per second, optimal distance, 1,100 meters. That's with all our upgrades. Bombs, 27,000 cumulative damage of all the bombs. This aircraft has excellent bombs for sure. Uh, and what's really nice about the P1102B is it has an excellent respawn time, uh, specific, specifically 53 seconds uh, to have your bombs up and running again. So if we check, for example, the IL-40P, First of all, it only has two bombs, and the resupply time for those bombs is a minute and 20 seconds versus 53 seconds on the P1102B. Same thing with rockets, 80 seconds to resupply. So it's really nice that those bombs resupply so quickly. Very nice feature of this aircraft. Survivability, I would say, is very closely linked with this aircraft's speed. It is a fast aircraft. Its cruising speed is 458 kilometers per hour. Boost speed, 718 kilometers per hour. If we look at the IL-40P, its greatest competition, Cruising speed 377 
kilometers per hour boost speed 615 kilometers per hour so pretty big difference there plus the IL-40 has a boost duration of 30 seconds versus the 45 seconds on the P-1102B. In terms of maneuverability, average time to turn 360 degrees is 17.6 seconds. Again, if we look at the IL-40P's maneuverability, 19.3 seconds for the 360 degree turn. That difference in turn rate can be very important on the battlefield because many times you're going to be facing IL-40Ps on the battlefield and having that extra turning rate really makes a big difference in terms of your ability to combat them. In terms of altitude, this aircraft's maximum optimal altitude is 1,000 meters. For the IL-40P, it's 800 meters with a rate of climb of 66 versus a rate of climb of 86 meters per second for the P1102B. So I would say one of the greatest strengths of the IL-40P versus the P1102B is that the IL-40P has rockets, whereas the German ground attack aircraft does not but it helps to offset that advantage by a quicker resupply time on its bombs. Cannon-wise, if you look at the IL-40P, it has four 23 millimeter cannons versus the four 30 millimeter cannons of the P-1102B. I do have this aircraft at specialist level so that you can see it in its full glory, so to speak. And for the cockpit, I have equipped improved cockpit armor, which increases pilots' resistance to injuries by 11%, gunners' resistance to injuries by 6%. Bonus characteristics, a plus 5% tolerance to damage from fire. That's really nice. Uh, the negatives are minus 1.6% in yaw maneuverability, which who cares? Minus 3.5% in roll maneuverability. Again, who cares? We're not doing a lot of rolling in this aircraft. So those negatives are like really not having any negatives. Your alternatives, well, I should say your alternative would be the site but I don't know that having increased accuracy is all that critical for this aircraft versus, say, if you were in a fighter. For the airframe, I went with Advanced Reinforced Skin, which increases a tail's resistance to critical damage by 19% and wing's resistance to critical damage by 19%. Also has bonus characteristics of plus 5% tails resistance to critical damage and plus 5% tolerance to damage from AA guns, which is really important. I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the AA guns these days are, are pretty vicious. Uh, so having a little extra <laughs> resistance uh, is a, definitely a positive. Uh, negatives are minus 2.6 cruise speed, minus 2.6 maximum speed with boost activated, but hey, it's still a very, very fast aircraft, um, so I, I, I don't think you're losing all that much there. Alternatives that we could have gone with would be reinforced airframe, which would increase aircraft hit points, uh, but I don't know that that's all that helpful and you lose aircraft maneuverability, and I think having the edge on IL-40Ps is, is pretty good. Don't want to lose that. A lightweight wing frame, that increases aircraft maneuverability but at the cost of aircraft hit points. I think it's more important to have uh, greater structural defensive improvements than more maneuverability. Could go with polished skin, which increases aircraft speed, but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. 
I, I don't know that I want to make this aircraft any less maneuverable. Again, I want to have that advantage over the IL-40Ps. There is no engine equipment available for this aircraft. Uh, forward firing weapon. We have two options since this is a specialist aircraft. And I went with improved reinforced bolt carriers, which increases burst length of forward firing offensive armament by 9.2%. Bonus characteristic of plus 2% rate of fire of forward firing offensive armament. Negative would be a minus 6.6 .6 in accuracy. But I don't know that that hurts us all that much. And um, having the extra burst length and rate of fire, really nice to have. Also went with improved gas operated action, which increases by 6.1% the rate of fire of forward firing offensive armament. Plus 5% chance of causing fire, which is really nice as a bonus characteristic. Again, we lose some more accuracy of minus 5.4%, but I really haven't noticed that much of a, a effect of the less accuracy. So, you know, I don't. It doesn't seem to hurt all that badly. Other options would have been long gun barrels, which would increase the range of fire. But hey, you're already out there at 700 meters. You know, what more do you need? That's pretty good. In terms of our outboard weapon. I went with advanced strengthened hard points, which increases by 11% bomb reload speed plus 11% rocket reload speed. We don't have rockets, so who cares about that? Uh, bonus characteristics, a plus 5% bombing accuracy, which is nice. The negatives are minus 4.2% in cruise speed, minus 4.2% in maximum speed with boost activated. But still... This is a fast aircraft, so it, it really doesn't hurt us all that badly. And it's nice to have those bombs back up and running as soon as possible. That's so critical and nice to have. Uh, you could have gone with bomb sight, increases bomb, increasing bomb accuracy, but that doesn't really... I haven't found that to be a big problem, so don't know that we need that very much as much as we do getting those bombs back up again. Uh, of course, we don't need rocket sight because we don't have rockets. Aerodynamic pylons, which would reduce the impact of outbound rockets and bombs on airspeed. Again, I, we do, just really don't have a problem with airspeed on this aircraft, so I don't know that we, we need that. As opposed to other things that we do need. Uh, consumables. Went with emergency medical kit, which heals injured crew members and provides resistance to injuries for 10 seconds. Your other option would have been fire extinguishing system, but you know, you're much more likely to get a crew member injured than have fire be that big of a deal. This, this aircraft is just naturally resistant to fire. For the engine consumable, I went with emergency engine restart system. Uh, which repairs a damaged engine. I haven't had too many problems with the engines going out, but you know, when you're a low flying attack aircraft, you're close to the ground, you don't want your engine going out and end up crashing uh, because it's not like you're a high flying fighter where you have plenty of time to recover if your engine gets knocked out. Uh, you're right there near the ground, so. If your engine goes out, that, that can be a big problem. In terms of ammunition or the forward firing weapons, I went with high explosive armor piercing ammunition, which provides maximum damage when firing at ground targets and is recommended for attack aircraft. You could go with universal ammunition. Um, that would certainly be just as fine, but I, I, I like the... Uh, the high explosive, personally. For the turret, I uh, went with special ammunition for turret gun, a maximum chance of gunner inflicting critical damage. Again, you could go with the universal ammunition. You're not going to see any type of major uh, decrease in results 
if you go with universal ammunition on either one of those. For the outbound weapon, I went with Heavy Warhead, which provides maximum damage caused by bombs and rockets and is re recommended for attack aircraft. The other option would have been Improved Explosive, which would provide maximum radius of blast damage and is recommended for bombers. Uh, that's tempting, <laughs> but uh, I think we'll go with what they recommend and uh, stick with the maximum damage. For pilot skills, first and foremost, I went with Demolition Expert, which increases damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius by 15%. If you're an attack aircraft, why would you ever not choose Demolition Expert? Um, I think it's just an absolute no-brainer must, right? Also, uh, went with Engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%, significantly improves aircraft acceleration. Again, speed is one of our uh, greatest advantages in this aircraft. A protection expert, which increases the positive effect of the mounted equipment on aircraft durability and resistance to critical damage by 40%. So all the choices, equipment choices we made where we enhance the durability of this aircraft, uh, this skill is going to increase those effects by 40%, which is really nice. And it's good synergy with our chosen equipment, which you guys know I'm very big about. Also chose Aerobatics Expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. Again, you know, many times when you get over these sectors, proving your maneuverability so that you can turn around, get back on the target as soon as possible, you know, fight IL-40Ps or other MEP-1102Bs, having that increased maneuverability can make all the difference in the world. Because if you're in a fight, for example, with another P-1102B and the enemy aircraft has the maneuverability advantage over you, you're in deep trouble. It's going to be hard to get out of that. And finally, I had one extra skill point, so I went with fire resistance. So anywhere we you know, increased our chance of fire, uh, this is going to help with that. All right, paint schemes, German aircraft. This is a desert that you're looking at right now. Probably one of my favorites for this aircraft. Uh, summer. Winter. And marine. You know, the German aircraft are really known for their awesome paint schemes. This not as much <laughs> not as much but uh, still better than others uh, certainly better looking paint scheme wise than the IL 40p of course you know eye of the beholder right okay so that is my build for the p 1102b let's head into some battles and See how it actually performs. So our battle in the P-1102B will be over the Road to Rome breakthrough you map. You are approaching the area of combat operations. Be ready. And we will head first to the garrison over here and then on to the airbase at center map. Let's see, we seem to be the only specialist aircraft in the mix. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's go.
bombs are very effective on this aircraft. Stay alert, pilot. Large enemy force spotted over the airfield. These 30 uh, millimeter cannons can definitely take on some air targets. Attention, all fighters. Enemy bombers detected. Destroy them. All right, so on we go to the uh, airfield. Down a little lower here, so we're not easy prey. Taking it on the chin here. Ah, I think everything's shooting at us. Jeez. Like there's nothing else they have to shoot at than us. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have much support there. We did a lot considering we had absolutely no support. aircraft there with all of this chewing on us plus any aircraft attack aircraft here finish it off Our mates got it we'll head over to the airfield and see what we can do to finish that sector to their command center. I just about had it with this guy. Time to get rid of him. Goodbye. Don't bother someone else.
And I think right now speed is our friend. We are taking a lot of heat. The enemy has control of all key objects. You cannot leave it like that. Hang in there. You'll soon be cut off from support. I say again, support will not be available. They've almost got us. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Well, you know what, folks? We did everything we could there. We just really had zero support. The enemy force is too strong. Okay, so uh, number one spot on the team, three chevrons on the grade rank, subjugator, avalanche, swooper. What is that? Awarded for assisting allies in at least four times in destroying ground targets. Okay. Uh, supporting fire. Head back to the hangar and uh, take a look at the after action report. Okay, so 83,802 in currency, 3,344 in experience points, 167 in free experience points. Uh, let's see, captured two sectors, destroyed 17 ground targets, doing 72,552 in damage to ground targets, 10,940 in personal points. So, yeah, I, I don't know that we, there's anything else we could have done there. I think the aircraft performed well, and it just, unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of support. Seemed like we were doing the heavy lifting there. But uh, hey, that's the way it is sometimes, right? Well, let's head into another battle and uh, see what we can do again. All right, so for our second battle, the P-1102B will be over the Albion Final Argument Theater of Operation. We will head first to the military base, and from the military base, we will head to the air base. All things going as normal, but we will adjust as we need to, as we are flexible in our strategy. Let's roll. Alright, so we'll use our 45 second boost to get over there as soon as we can. Alright, let's see what we have going on here. back and take this target out hopefully or crash whatever works best <laughs> well we did good damage with it I guess and we got the sector so that's the important thing right all right, let's head over and see if we can finish off this garrison over here for our team. Go ahead and respawn our bombs.
finish off that ground target, and that'll do it. All right. On to the military base. That'd be really sweet if we had both military bases. And our bombs will be loaded up, ready to go by the time we get there. There they are. They're pretty quick uh, on the respawn, which is nice. The enemy Got this is gun emplacement. Concentrate on these two areas of similar nature here. Should be able to take all those out with cannons, pretty much. There we go. One more target, ground target ought to do it. to the uh, air base center map and see what we can do. So we may have somebody coming in on us here. Oh, <laughs> decided to run into the blimp. Okay, so we're here at the air base. finish off this tower before they get us. There we go. Okay. So we have everything. Know that we need to do much from here on out in terms of our Keep it on attack Victory aircraft. So maybe we'll go in with our fighter and uh, see what we can do to defend what we have been able to take. So number one spot on the team, four chevrons on the grade rank, and subjugator, head back to the hangar and take a look at the after action report. All right, so 81,900 in currency, 4545 in experience points, 227 in free experience points. Captured four sectors, 11 ground targets destroyed, did 58,431 in damage to ground targets. Uh, let's see, what else? 8,550 in personal points. So folks, there you have it. The P-1102B. Very fast ground attack aircraft. Uh, good cannons. Excellent bombs, good respawn time on the bombs, which is really nice. 53 seconds for resupply time on the bombs. 
So not too bad. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I have making it. I hope you all have a great new year. And if you get the MEP1102B and raise it up to specialist level even, I hope you have great success in it.